Welcome back. Lionel Messi's brilliance lifted Barcelona to a 2-0 win at Real Madrid on Wednesday in a stormy Champions League semi-final first leg, which saw Real finish with 10 men and coach Jose Marino sent from the bench. Bad blood had flowed between the arch-rivals in the lead-up to the match, which was reflected on the pitch. Barca reserve goalkeeper Pinto was shown a red card following a fight next to the tunnel, while Real defender Pepe was dismissed for a lunging tackle on Daniel Alves with just over half an hour left. Marino voiced his disapproval of the decision and was banished to the stands for the rest of the match. Afterwards, at the news conference, Pep Guardiola warned his players that, he, that they still had a good deal of work to do in the second leg and said you could never write off the nine times winners. Meanwhile, Marino unleashed a rant at his press conference in which he accused UEFA of favouring Barca. The final is at London's Wembley Stadium on May 28. Ben Fissau and Braga trained on Wednesday before the first all-Portuguese semi-final of a European competition when they meet in Lisbon for the first leg of the Europa League last four. Both sides dropped into the Europa League after third-place finishers in the group stage of the Champions League. They will be keen to end their European season of, at the final in Dublin on May 18 against either fellow Portuguese team Porto or Spain's Villarreal, who will contest the other semi-final. Meanwhile, Villarreal coach Juan Carlos Garrido said the team needs to be aggressive defensively if they are to dominate the Europa League semi-finals against FC Porto. Villarreal will gatecrash a Portuguese party as they try to reach a first major European final at the third attempt. Villarreal midfielder Santo Cazorla said Porto are a team that strikes a lot and they have a lot of rhythm and kind of match of come and go and also stressed aggressive defensive play would be key. The Board of Control of Cricket in India has announced that former Zimbabwean cricketer Duncan Fletcher will take over as India's new coach from South African Gary Kirsten. The BCCI said the new coach's first assignment would be to lead the team on their tour of England in July. The 62-year-old former England coach has signed on for two years and takes over from Kirsten after the South African turned down an extension to his three-year contract following India's World Cup victory earlier this month. India are currently ranked first in the test matches and second in one-day internationals. And Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin officially opened the World Figure State Skating Championships in Moscow and paying tribute to Japan and its people during a solemn ceremony in the evening on Wednesday. The championships were moved to Russia from Japan after last month's earthquake and tsunami and the opening ceremony was dedicated to Japan with the Japanese flag pictured on the ice during the ice dancers' performance. At the official ceremony, the skaters dressed in national costumes and carried the flags of the countries participating in the championships. At the very first competition, Canada's Patrick Chan recorded the highest ever score to win the men's short program and took a giant step towards his first global title. And now turning to what's on everybody's minds, it's just one day to go until the estimated 2 billion people from around the world tune in to see Prince William and Kate Middleton wed in Westminster Abbey for the wedding of the century. And the worldwide build-up has been outstanding ever, over the past couple of months. So here's a recap of what's been going on. It's the wedding we've all been waiting for, the marriage of Prince William and Kate Middleton. And the world's media and fans alike have been gathering in London this week to secure the best views of the event. According to Dr John Hall, the Dean of Westminster, who will be conducting the ceremony tomorrow, both William and Kate have had first-hand experience in choosing the details of the ceremony, which is to be an intimate event. And between now and the wedding itself, there will be a couple of occasions with, with final rehearsals. Uh, it, it seems to me that they've taken a very great interest in, in the detail of the service, quite rightly, and they've made a lot of decisions, obviously, that all the decisions themselves, and, and it's a very good, I think, positive working relationship. We're looking forward to it immensely. The Dean of Westminster also revealed that the Abbey have given the couple the gift of music, a tradition for special events throughout history. The Abbey has seen some of the most historic royal weddings throughout its time, including six royal couples in the Middle Ages, nine in the 20th century, and this will be the first in the 21st century. 
The funeral service for Diana also took place at the Abbey in 1997. Flowers from Windsor Great Park in the Royal Estates will be supplied by the Queen for the wedding, which according to organisers will be everything seasonal, British, elegant and understated. 20-foot high trees have been put into the Abbey to recreate a lavish English country garden. The Abbey is a wonderful building anyway, uh, but it will just look, transform the building. It will almost be like um, the outdoor in, indoor um, because of the trees and the other plant material that's in there. Um, you're going to feel as though you're actually outside. It will be wonderful. The lead up to the wedding has also seen a huge amount of royal wedding merchandise go on sale, from the distribution of 300,000 official coins to commemorative stamps to mark the big day, as well as public transport themed tickets. Companies have been working flat out to keep up with commemorative merchandise production, from China and paperback novels to even a Princess Catherine doll that went on sale. Ladies and gentlemen, I now announce that the Princess Catherine doll is now on sale. Thank you. And then there's the fans. One royal fan is so keen to catch a glimpse of Prince William and Kate Middleton on their special day, he spent four cold nights camped out on the pavement in front of the Abbey to catch a glimpse of the newlyweds on Friday. I'm a royalist, and there's a lot of royalists in this country. It works for us, and they do good for this country, and they do a lot of charity as well. And, that, and I was brought up as a royalist by my parents, and I've always been the one, I respect the Queen. And as the world waits to see the final revelations tomorrow from the hugely anticipated wedding dress to the guest list, the world eagerly awaits the wedding of the century. Laura Buckwell, Seven National News. And finally this evening, the gentlemen of Dubai are in for a glossy treat as the launch of the first ultimate modern day gents magazine has been officially launched. The style stakes in Dubai are high and men's magazine The Rake is a guide for the men here on how to achieve and follow classic men's elegance. From features on the art of dressing for dinner to style icons and cars, The Rake aims to provoke, educate and inspire. According to its editor, Dubai is still a young country where there is a lot to learn in terms of fashion. With such a multicultural society within the UAE comes a huge mix of fashion trends so what trends do we see in terms of men's fashion in Dubai and what sort of fashion guidelines should men be following? I mean, I think a lot of guys here are, are looking towards tailors now to have bespoke stuff done. Increasingly, they have their shirts done, they have their suits done. So, and I don't think it's specific to, to nationality. I think it's guys simply who adhere to that philosophy of wanting to be stylish and to not have a suit made that in six months time they don't want to wear anymore. I think because you get so many guys from so many different worlds or from different countries over here, I think the men have the general know-how, but I think Dubai sometimes lets them down because there is not enough of bespoke tailoring in Dubai or, or you know, you can, go to, you can go to London, you can go to anywhere on Savile Row and, and, and you have a choice, you have a plethora of guys you can design a suit for you. In Dubai, there's only one and two, and we are hoping, or I would hope, that something like Rake can help other people, other fashion houses to come to Dubai and say, you know, Dubai is a serious, serious town for fashion or style, and, uh, and this is what we're hoping for. And with that, let's take a look at the local and international weather forecast for tomorrow. Before we head out, here are the top stories again. Minister of Education and Scientific Research presents award to Sir Bob Geldof. Goodwill Ambassador supports the Make-A-Wish Foundation. US storms and tornadoes kill at least 45. And UAE bosses give brokers more time for new settlement system.
Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. As always, we love to hear your comments. You can contact us at news at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04-367-2230 and do join our Facebook page. But from the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.